هي زوجتي عنوانها عنواني وحبيبتي بستانها بستاني Forty-five percent to fifty percent of marriages in the United States end with divorce, while the percent of divorce in Europe is about thirty-five percent. What are the reasons for divorce? Maybe the difference in opinions, the lack of psychological and emotional harmony, the harsh treatment from one side to the other. Many men lack the art of dealing with their ladies. Seventy percent of women who were killed in the United States were murdered by their husbands or boyfriends. Before the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent, the woman, the wife, was not really that much appreciated in different societies. Here, she was burned to death with her dead husband, and there, she was locked in a grave. Even in the Arabic tribes where the messenger was sent, she was just inherited like any of his belongings. This is the society back then. This is how people used to think when the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent. Nowadays, the man who opens the door for his lady is considered as a gentle, delicate, and civilized man. He's so much appreciated by society and by everyone around him. Back then, 15 centuries ago, this was shameful. It was shameful to respect your wife. It shows that you're not a man. Back then, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to lean down on the ground and put his knees for his wife to step on and get on the horse. Imagine, he's decades, centuries, what I say, millenniums ahead in human civilization and respect to women and ladies' rights. 20% of pregnant women in the world are subject to violence from their husbands or relatives. 70% of them cannot run away because of their children or lack of income. This madness needs one thing. It needs the teachings of Muhammad. Sayyida Aisha, the Prophet's wife, narrated that one time some of his companion played with the sticks in the masjid. And she wanted to watch, so he put his hands for her to lean her head on and watch. She said, I attended to keep watching for longer and longer, just to see when will he get bored, when will he get tired and remove his hand. And she said, actually, I lost the interest in watching and he was still there for me. Once there was a serious and critical situation where the companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, literally did not obey him. And only because of the advice of his wife, the issue was resolved. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, was not just nice and gentle with his wife, he also respected her as an equal person. Prophet Muhammad said, Anything you spend for the sake of Allah, you will get your reward for it, even if it was a morsel of bread you put in your wife's mouth. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, In this world, women and perfume have been made dear to me, and the dearest among all. 
is salah, prayer. And his wife said that he never hit a woman with his hands. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, act kindly towards women, and the Quran says, and live with them in kindness. For the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, being a woman's rights activist and defending the women's rights back then, this was not an addition to his message. This was something that actually made a lot of resistance between the Arabs back then. A lot of the Arabs refused to join this new message, this new religion, because it simply equals between the man and the woman. So although this slowed the spread of his message, although this, he still insisted on being himself, on delivering the full message from Allah. He still gave the woman their rights because it's simply their rights in Islam. Even after Islam, when Umar ibn al-Khattab, a very respected companion of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he got angry on his wife because she answered him back. And he blamed her for answering him back. And she said, what's the problem? Even the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, answers him back. Why don't you accept? And this is how the whole society was tuned to respect the woman. The Quran addresses men about women and says, and do not make difficulties for them in order to take back part of what you gave them. And the Prophet says, you are obliged to support and provide them, your wives, with clothing kindly. The Prophet also says, of the diner you spend in Allah's path, or to set a slave free, or as charity to the needy, or to support your family, the one yielding the greatest reward is that which you spent on your family. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told his companion teaching them that the best among the believers is indeed the one with the best manners and the one who is most kind and gentle to his wife. If you saw the Prophet in his home and then compared this to our homes in the 21st century in terms of treatment, interaction, you'll find the big difference. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to fix his sandals, used to sew his cloth, and used to help his wife in the normal and daily home activities. Who does this nowadays? Prophet Muhammad said, Fear Allah in respect of women. You took them with the permission from Allah. He also said to his companions, Indeed, women are the counterparts of men. Only a noble person would be kind to them, and only a mean person would insult them. Let's imagine a man, a leader, with his army. And then he would ask this army to go ahead and would take his wife and ask her to race. And actually she will win. Then years later, the same man, the same leader, with his army and his wife. And he will ask the army to lead ahead and would race again. But this time he will win. And then he will tease her laughing and saying, now we're even. This is the Prophet, peace be upon him, with his wife. And back home, in privacy, he would praise his wife. He would pamper her and spoil her, call her with the beloved nickname. And he would tell her how much she's pretty and her beautiful features. This is the Prophet, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad said, the best of you are those who behave best to their wives. One of the best orders given by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was to one of his companions. And this is not to enter the house at night, coming back from a long trip without letting your wife know. This is just to give her a chance to take care of herself, comb her hair, 
and to see her in a way she wants to be seen in. And during the day, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, would never enter the house before knocking the door and letting his wife know that he's entering. And the first thing he would do was to use the siwak, which is basically to brush his teeth. He wants always to be smelled properly and nice for his wife. When the Prophet was asked, Whom do you love the most? He said, Aisha. The one who asked him said, I am asking you about men. The Prophet said, Her father. This is how Prophet Muhammad saw his wife. He saw her as the most beloved person to him, and her family was the most beloved family to him. While other beliefs believe that the woman during her monthly period is defiled and impure and that she also impures anything that she touches and they used to build a tent outside of the main tent for her to live in during those few days at that time the Prophet peace be upon him used to check where did his wife drink and just take the sip from the same place she did where did she eat and he will follow her lips and eat from the same place he would comb her hair he would make her feel that she is more beloved and wanted at this critical and sensitive part of the month for her when the prophet muhammad was asked about the right of the wife he said beat her when you get food, give her clothes to wear. When you wear clothes, refrain from abusing her and do not separate from your wife, except within the house. Among all the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, before dying, he chose to stress on two things. One is the prayer, the main thing in Islam, and the other was the wife, the woman. He said, act to them kindly. These are the two main things Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, chose to stress on before dying. Astawsu bin nisa'i khayra. Hiya zawjati unwanuha unwani wa habibati بستانها بستاني ورفيقة العمر الذي أيامه في بيتها أزكى من الريحان هي أم أبنائي وروضة مهجتي وشريكتي في الفرح والأحزان هي من إذا مل الفؤاد رأيتها زهرا جديدا يانع الألوان